Well, he first became famous as brown bagger Murray Slaughter on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Then his role as the Love Boat Captain made him a household name. But long before he ever appeared on television, Gavin McLeod was working with some of the biggest stars in the business. Take a look. Veteran actor Gavin McLeod has entertained theater and TV audiences for more than six decades. And he's worked with some Hollywood legends like Bob Hope, George Burns, and Betty White. But he's best known for his TV roles as Murray Slaughter on the classic hit The Mary Tyler Moore Show, and as Captain Meryl Steubing on the popular program The Love Boat. However, Gavin says his most important role is being an ambassador for God. He shares about this and the twists and turns of his life in his book, This Is Your Captain Speaking. And please welcome back a longtime friend of the 700 Club, Gavin McLeod. Gavin, so great to see oh, you. Good oh, good morning. Good morning, good morning to you. Well, of course, you became famous with Mary Tyler Moore and your role on The Love Boat, but you were acting a long time before that. Tell us about some of the roles before, before those, before you hit it big. Well, my first Broadway role was uh, in A Hat Full of Rain with Shelley Winters, Ben Gazzara, Tony Francios. It was a play that dealt with drugs, and that brought me to California. I was with that for a year and a half and coming to California, I met Ted Knight for the first time, my first day in California, and then things just started to happen. I had one wonderful job. I got fired from that job. It's all in the book. Right. But it turned out to be one of the best days of my life mm. because what was so destructive yeah. turned out to be the best thing. And that's one of the messages I have here, that you never give up. Right. But the best is yet to come. I'm 82 now, and the best is yet to come. I'm able to serve the Lord at this age with such, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Wow. Because I've been through physical too. stuff like you can't believe, you know, bypass, and I have stents all over me, and all those things. But every day is a <laughs> joy. Every day is to be able to say, to, when, when I realized that I could be forgiven of my sins mm. and become born again and given a new role in life, I have never stopped thanking the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes me tick, and that's what makes this book go. And that's why the people are buying this book, like, I guess they're getting encouraged. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to do with this book. I wanted to, like, if I could bring one person to the Lord by reading this book, it would be worth all the effort. Well, you've worked with some of the best actors in the business. Who stands out the most to you, Gavin? Well, my wife, I always thought, Patty, you know, she was a, a big guest star on The Love Boat. And, and that was, that probably made me prouder than anything. Mm -hmm. But Tom Hanks was a young actor when he came mm -hmm. on our show. He was doing a series called Too Close for Comfort, I think, oh, with yeah. Peter Scolari. Yeah, so and funny. he came on, and you can see what's happened to Tom Hanks. But we've had, oh, like Ginger Rogers, and we've had some of the greatest names in the mm -hmm. history of films were on The Love Boat. And to me, that was the biggest kick. <laughs> It was such a great era for television, wasn't it? You know, The Love Boat and Mary Tyler Moore, and it, it just doesn't seem like, you know, last night I was turning on the TV trying to find something, and there's just nothing on. It's a different time today. Yeah. It's a completely different time. Uh, I went to New York with my book, and I met so many people who interviewed me. And the interesting thing is, like, the, like your age, there were little children when The Love Boat was on, but they used to sit with their grandparents and their mom and dad, and have that experience, they, starting with the Mary Tyler Moore show, yeah. because you could sit, and even today when those reruns, the reruns are going through the roof, because usually people with families or older folks are watching those shows again. It brings back memories, but also it's something that's palatable and almost inspiring, if you will, compared to the things that are out there today. Gavin, once you arrived and you tasted fame, how did that change your life, or did it? Well, what changed my life is the fact of being the captain on the love boat. Mm -hmm. Well, the critics said that's going to sink. They thought it was a terrible piece. I thought it was going to be great. And it turned out, thank the Lord, that it was great. And we were all over the world, became goodwill ambassadors for the United States. We were in 90 countries. And, but it, with that came, as the captain, it became more responsibility. Mm. I've never had that kind of responsibility in any show I've ever done. And uh, so I really... It became my life, and it became my life to the point where that dominated, and I felt I, was, I, wouldn't, I couldn't be married anymore. Hmm. That was the focus of my life since I was four years old. I wanted to be an actor. Here I am, 49, 48, and now on top of the world, wow. going all over. And so I, I put my desire, my accomplishments, whatever you call the gifts from God, right. before my wife. Mm. And so I said, I can't handle the both. So 
we got a, I got a divorce, and that was three years. But in that period, I can see how God allowed that. In that period, my wife Patty, eventually, a three-year period, Pat and Shirley Boone brought her to Jesus. And then these ladies brought her to Jesus again, another right. prayer grouping. And then before you know it, there was something in my life. In the morning of my mom's operation, they, f- they found the cyst the size of a baseball in her left brain. And the doctor said she was in the middle 70s then. The doctor said, I don't know if she's going to make it or not. You know, mm-hmm. she could be a vegetable. And so the morning of that operation, I prayed to Jesus mm. in that bed. And I said, I will give you my life if you give my mother more time. Oh. Wow. And that was the beginning of my, that was September 15th, 1984. Mm, and that's how you became a Christian. And that was the beginning. And then something told me to call Patty. I didn't know what it was. Mm. I got the number from my secretary. I called her. I said, mm. it was 7 o'clock, seven, about 10 after 7 now in the morning. And I said, hi, this is Gavin. She said, I was just thinking about you. Mm. I said, can we be friends? And she said, that's all I've ever wanted. I don't even know why I'm saying these things. She said, the Holy Spirit just had these things come out of me. Right. I said, can I see you? She says, well, I started a group called Ladies. I'm not going to be here. I said, what ladies? But L-A-D-I-E-S. Life after divorce can eventually be sane. <laughs> it's a support group on all over the country. But Gavin, you eventually remarried, Patty. We got remarried, but this time we got remarried. We have a threefold marriage, a covenant marriage with Jesus. Mm. There's three of us in that marriage. We got Jesus, Patty, and Gavin right there. Praise the Lord. He's the glue. Praise he the keeps Lord. us together. <laughs> now, in 1986, Gavin, you were actually right here in this studio co-hosting the 700 Club. Tell me about that. We what got an to, honor. Well, it's, there it, you are. Let, check that out. Well, that's oh, how, that's Dr. How you. Edwin Lewis Cole. <laughs> oh, oh, I love that man. Oh, gee, I did look, look you younger, have, don't you I? Changed. I'm serious. You have not hardly changed at all. Oh, I loved him. He had the Christian Men's Network, and uh, he wrote Maximize Manhood. Uh, that, was a, that was a wonderful experience to be with him on this program. Well, in, well of all the roles um, that you've played, which one would you say is your favorite role? My favorite role, without any kind of even thinking about it, is Jonathan Sperry. I did a small Christian film. We made it for less than a million dollars. And I played this older gentleman, Jonathan Sperry, who teaches these young boys the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has brought more people to Jesus than you can believe. I call it the little movie that could. And it's all over the world now. There's a man in Canada who's distributed 200,000 of them. And I get letters all the time, all parts of the world, from people who come to Jesus because of this movie. Uh, just last week, I got a letter from a grandmother who's, they came home from church and the little boy started, they had just seen the movie. Mm. And he's cr- crying and he's praying. And she said, why are you doing? He says, I'm just praying that, that God will keep me from being the bully that I am. Oh dear. Because that, we deal with bullyhood in the, in the movie. Fantastic. Well, Gavin, you're 82. You're still acting, you're, you're writing. The joy you're of the Lord is our strength. You're obviously still preaching. It's so wonderful to see you and meet you. And uh, Gavin's book is called This Is Your Captain Speaking, and it's available wherever books are sold.